What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I'm your host, Devin, alongside my co-host, Joe, the show. <laughs> and uh, today, <clears throat> we're talking about one of the coolest topics, most interesting topics in the world, aliens. Or maybe out of this world. Uh, you know, the kind of started off, I, I really want to have a conversation that's about uh, why I think it's real, and then if you have rebuttals, because at this point I think there's enough evidence to prove that aliens exist. You know, just do you want to hear the evidence? Do you want to hear the proof? Are you uh, I mean, there's, gonna... there's things out there that one could probably possibly believe in that, which, you know, they totally debunk it, but no, I mean, let's hear it. I guess we'll see what you got. Okay. Convince me. Well, uh, we'll start with, so I, I love watching uh, documentaries, TV shows about the topic, uh, listening to people talk about it. It's something that definitely interests me. Uh, and I saw a documentary a couple weeks ago. It's an older documentary, but it's called Patient 17. And it's about a surgeon who removes microchips, uh, you know, I don't know, the, the an implant maybe, I guess you could call it but it appears to be from an intelligent life source not made by humans. Uh, just because there's no surgical incision, the properties that, are, that the material is made up of is uh, highly specified and materials not typically found on Earth or in this galaxy. So to have all that combined randomly inside of someone's body so the would suggest... Like, so how did this element you know get into this person i mean i mean obviously obviously we know that they say that it's some being an alien or whatever you want to say but what is his recollection of this uh so the way i understood it because uh, they honestly didn't talk about it a whole lot as far as like his encounter uh with aliens but basically his story is as a young boy he was in his room at night and they appeared <laughs> <laughs> In his room, aliens, of course, uh, appeared in his room, and he was paralyzed, you know, with fear, uh, didn't quite know what to do, didn't really think it actually happened, but then later on in life, he was getting an x-ray done or, or something of that ilk, something where they're scanning your body, and that's whenever they saw this tiny little speck in his leg, he starts to do more research about it and ends up coming to the conclusion that, hey, this could be something more than just a, a little speck. And so he goes to the surgeon who lets him know, hey, I just so happen to remove technology like this out of people's bodies all the time. And so on camera, you can see them removing this object from this guy's leg, uh, them running the diagnostics, having experts look at it and breaking it down. And the final conclusion is, hey, this isn't something we've ever seen before. Uh, given the, what I think they call it the isotopic make, makeup of it, basically the materials inside of the object uh, so, were highly sophisticated. So to me, it was a little premature in, here's why I think this would not work out, okay? So you go to the doctor, you've got something in him, he's like, oh, we don't, one, they can't tell by looking at MRI, CT, x-rays, you know, like this is something, I mean, they can tell, okay, it's something there. But to jump straight to saying, hey, let's send you to this, UFO surgeon, you know, not just a general surgeon, or even if it was low enough, I guess the doctor could potentially cut it out, whatever. Right. But that, that, to me, there's some holes in that story, or holes in that that would just go straight from, oh, we did this MRI or CAT scan to, or X ray to straight, oh, let's send you to this, you know, alien or UFO doctor or surgeon. I, I just happens to be, I pulled this stuff out people before. That that seems a little that seems a little strange, you know. Obviously, yeah, it just doesn't seem right. So to me, that kind of debunks that. And, then, and on top of that, you know, so he, he recollects in what his version of an abduction or an encounter, you know, and then all these things, he just automatically correlates it. I mean, if the dude fell down on, on a rock, you know, just saying, you know, this is an example, he could have had a piece of that lodged in his leg or something that grew, you know, over. And so, obviously, they're okay. They're saying it's not a rock, so I'll buy that. But I'm just saying this could have got there with just this one incident. Well, uh, you know, first of all, the first thing that I would say to that is we, you know, that's the thing in the story. I don't think they really say how 
long he waited from the time that he found the speck to the time that he decided to have it surgically removed. Uh, but even if it was, you know, three or four years, you know, or six months, you know, from the time that he found it, to me that's kind of regardless of the point, you know, you have a object that uh, is highly sophisticated inside of your body right. that you in no way, shape, or form remember how it got there. Uh, on top of having an encounter whenever you were a child uh, <clears throat> and other people having similar stories as well because this wasn't the first patient to have uh, an object like this inside of them. Uh, in fact, some of them actually had two or three of these inside of them. Yeah, so, so but you know, so the, the thing goes is, is the story goes with them and the emphasis was the people that pull this out, you know, they... This had to have been, they didn't say aliens, in my, my correction. They said it was just a, basically an intelligence. Yeah, uh, advanced life. So, but the biggest thing that they said in that interview, in that documentary, was they it was Zinc 64 and Zinc 66. And they're like basic, and, and in there, and I think, I think I even have that actually in here. Um, yeah, so based on the ICP analysis of the object, Colburn is convinced that, that to have enough evidence to confidentially claim the object is made from materials not normally found on Earth. Now, here's my issue with that. So I get on there, I'm like, okay, that's intriguing. So I look up Zinc 66, Zinc 64. Those things are found on Earth. So just so we can clarify and not to get too scientific with this, but Zinc 64 is an isotope is used in nuclear reactors. We obviously know that's been around for some time. Mm -hmm. um, and zinc-66 in the atom is a stable isotope of zinc with relative atomic mass and that stuff that's whatever. Um, get some percentage of that's a natural abundance. Uh, and nuclear, it's a nuclear spin zero, whatever world that means, I don't know. Out of my, out of my realm. But the, what I'm saying is, is they're, they're claiming this stuff is not, you know, it's out of this world. And it's not. You know the two the two that they did say specifically um they're they're in abundance they're they're there um now i do know there's some talk about those things in just normal existence they're basically for all practical purposes poof, they're gone they evaporate they disintegrate whatever but this stuff is here so it's not like this is some new thing so it's a lie i mean well but based here's off the that. thing though but here's the <clears> thing though but you're also not considering the fact that the complexity of all of these materials combined and these elements put together in one little rice speck of an object uh is what makes it further questionable about its true origins because just because we have an abundance of uh this certain type of element doesn't mean that we can put it together in such a way where it's it's functioning uh like they think it is well sure i mean i i so. agree that you know a combination of a bunch of things could make you you could be like okay where'd this come from what is this yeah who you made know? it well and but, that's the thing if it if it is something from this earth and somebody made that and put it inside of somebody what's going on with that well see but i look at that as it's a it, to me i say it's a hoax and the reason i say it's a hoax is because you have to look at the source of where it came from and there's already a whole shot there's already errors in where it was presented you know so you know, with them saying, oh, the Zinc 66, Zinc 64, it's out of this world, it's from another planet. No, it's not. So you've already got a lie, or you got misinformation. I, I don't say it lying, I think it's probably a public, no. you know, trying to get some attention is what I ultimately would think. But, so they say these things, and to the average person, well, obviously because of how many people's watched it and views and all these other things, you know, they buy it. Um, so you have to look at the source. How, how credible is that source? And from the start, when they're saying these things with misinformation, that source is not credible. Well, I'm, the thing that is that they're, they are experts in the field, but as far as the people who analyzed it and everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, people can have two different conclusions about uh, how rare or not rare something is, or how complex or not complex a situation is. Now, that's fine, <clears throat> but you know, we can't sit here and say like, oh, these guys are, are nut jobs. That are just oh look we found alien software inside this person like no they they were doing it scientifically as far as you know having it properly examined uh to try and better understand it because either way regardless of whether it is actually an alien or not uh somebody embedding radioactive substances inside of our body probably isn't well yeah because some of those public. some of those they went so. in there and and they said they were made in superconductors which the material you know long story on that the material is toxic you know so you know, obviously, yeah. you know, and, and again, that's kind of a problem because, you know, 
even according to their own data that they sent over, this stuff is extremely toxic, but yet this guy has it in him. So, so see, there's some errors there that, that brings me to question. So I guess what I would say is, you know, can, I, can we completely rule out that this was an object that was in this guy? I personally don't believe it because one, two of the biggest things they said is debunked. We know that they, that is readily available or available. The other one is this is so toxic or extremely toxic is the word they use, but yet this guy had it in and it didn't seem to bother him. Yeah. So I would say it's debunked. Now, to the effect that could this, could something exist of that nature? I'm not educated enough in a scientific field, you know, to, to say, you know, I would obviously probably tend to say that this is, that it was fabricated. And the reason I say it's fabricated is because even though these guys are, are smart, you know, I, I'm not going to take away from their intelligence and, and what they do, but money talks. And so I think that it's possible to obviously not possible. It happens every day in politics. You pay somebody a certain amount, X amount of dollars, they're going to go with your story, you know? And, and if this gets enough traction, you know, depending on what their motive is, if it was just a hoax, just a whole scam to begin with, or just maybe they actually believed it, you know, but either way you can get somebody on board with that stuff. Well, here's what I would say though. I, that's kind of, to me, part of the problem in this conversation is that you do have people that try to stigmatize and say that there's a, a profit motive uh, or that this is uh, attention grabbing stuff rather than people who have real stories and real understanding of things that we don't normally consider through our day to day lives. True. And one of the things I mean by that is you have guys like Commander David Fravor who you know, he's a, a pilot in the in the Navy, I believe. And with that, you know, we trust him to fly fighter jets, but he has a close encounter with an alien object called the, the Tic Tac. Right. Uh, there is video of it and <clears throat> comes back, you know, does his uh, reporting and everything else. And here we are years later and people are trying to say that uh, that's not a UFO that he was seeing that is either a bird or a glitch in the system and the point that I'm ultimately trying to get at is that we always try to discredit uh, people that were willing to send in the air to protect America's skies but we don't trust them enough that if they say they saw an unidentified flying object oh well they must have been crazy well I mean there's got to be some, some degree some credibility as far as the government's concerned with it because they have people to keep an eye on that stuff they're supposed to report this stuff to now yeah for sure and <laughs> so you know I, you know a direct answer for that one I don't know what that guy's seen my again my issue with it is this and and I'll probably say this to about any any topic that you'll probably pull up is in today's society in you know 2022 almost 23 there is so much so many cameras everybody has a camera I say everybody for the most part everybody has a cell phone you know, everybody, there's cameras everywhere and stuff like that. And all the pictures that they ever have are always grainy and blurred. Now, there is the rare occasion that these things do come across, and, and I'm probably a little off on quote, so don't direct quote me, but the ones that are clear are debunked because they can see, okay, th that's fake because of this or, or this or that because it's very easily spotted. So... My issue with it is with the technology, with all these advancements we have in cameras and stuff like that, that th these people from like outer space, you know, I don't know if they could pick up a pin on the ground from outer space, but I'm saying it is very detailed information with the can and they're telling me that they, why are all these pictures blurry? You know, like we have very sophisticated <laughs> stuff. Okay, well here, you know, they get the so satellite from this. Let me, so we get this clear. A satellite out there floating around, they can pick you out and tell who you are. They have that good of a visual. How come we can't, in every picture we get of some alien or some foreign thing, it's always grainy and blurry where it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. Okay, my first thing, why would they give you the great footage? Why, why, why would the government willingly come out? Because then at that point, then they have to admit, hey, by the way, we also have alien craft that we've recovered and are currently back engineering to try to <coughs> well, and recreate. You know, you know, so it opens up a, a gigantic door that they don't want. Open That's from the government open. side. And, I mean, uh, you know, further that kind of what you're saying about the side of, you know, with all the cameras and technology that we have. Well, whenever you're talking about people from another universe coming in, 
they can clearly cloak themselves where they can be seen on radar but not visually like eye to eye but then they can also be seen visually but not on radar so to try and say like oh because someone can't pull out their phone and record them doesn't mean that they aren't there because like i feel like if you're advanced enough to fly here you're probably advanced enough to know when someone whips out a phone and it's trying to record you. I don't think so because there's too many people. I mean, if it was a one-on-one -on -one thing, which see that's which the is other why thing. there are videos that exist, and that's the other half of it. You know, so you do have plenty of other examples that already do exist where people do get to get this on camera. Now the thing of it is, you gotta understand how far in the sky are these objects when this person's recording it. So no matter what, even with the best phones <coughs> that we have today, trying to record an airplane that's you know however high in the sky well, people do this you're stuff not going to get the best video people do this stuff professionally and they have professional cameras out there and well, all the professionals are really the ones who probably ruin ufology more than they may be else. but the thing of it is that that does that i mean the argument's still there because there's professional people that do this i mean that's their life they make a living doing it i don't know how it'd be nice to know um but this they do real. this stuff uh -huh. and and so their pictures and stuff is the same thing they're always you know some crappy photo or video and you know it, it always turns out that way and i'm not trying to prove that every video is real but the the biggest point that i want to make is that even if one of them was real just one then that that proves everything else that everybody's been saying for a long time yeah if we could yeah, prove so that that's the problem we can't prove it because what are we doing to find out we're not doing much you know when you only give a oh no a, i think they program. are i don't get me wrong you know because we could sit here and, and take a stance as like no i don't believe this this ain't real i'm not ruling it out <laughs> you know that's the thing i don't completely rule out that there's some existence of something else besides human life so you think roswell was you a, know, a balloon that crashed well, that one's debatable too. Because <laughs> uh, the biggest question I would have is, how do you go one day? Hey, this is a down flying saucer. To the next day, oh, it was weather balloon. Well, you I know, mean, that, there's just the thing of it is, difference. whenever there's <laughs> the, the problem of it is that anything that happens and all of a sudden, boom, the government gets involved. Yeah. You know, it raises red flags right off the bat. Yeah. You know, I mean, so it makes the person question. Okay, this guy said he's seen something, whatever it may be. You can totally discredit. But then you have to do pull in, in fairness to the situation or the topic. You've got to be like, okay, if it was a nothing and this guy's just, even if he's just completely lost his freaking mind, then why did the government show up at his house at a certain time to even look at, to investigate it? Yeah. I mean, there had to have been some credibility, some credibility. Yeah. So, uh, of some sorts, even if they ruled it a certain way. So, well, yeah, you know, you, you talk about the government, uh, you know, lying about people, doing things to people. Uh, to me, the best example you can bring up whenever you're having the UFO conversation is Bob Lazar, uh, because he's the man that exposed Area 51 and S4 where they were studying and back engineering these spacecraft. Uh, he has a really good detailed account of what he did while he was there, uh, as far as what project he worked on, how everything worked. Uh, I would have to say, because I anytime I'm watching something about UFOs, I'm a skeptic because True. it's like I, I want to believe it, yes, but it's like there is so much BS out there because people do make money uh, doing this stuff that it, you want to make sure that the information you're getting is correct. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I got on and I saw Bob uh, talking about his experience and what he was doing, you know, right away you can tell that this guy is legit, and <clears throat> the government went to great lengths to try and discredit Bob uh, that he had ever been a part of this program. Uh, they said that he didn't go to college at MIT, even though he did. Uh, they said he didn't work at Los Alamos Labs, which he did, and he had to prove all of these things uh, through unconventional well, methods. Well, let's be fair. Nothing, nothing, that, nothing of anything substantial has been proven. That's just what we, you know, can, I guess, to somewhat research. But the thing of it is, what do you, you mean, mean, like proving what he said? Well, okay, so he supposedly went and did all the, let's take this step by step. So yeah. he went, so the college aspect, mm -hmm. you know. Saying that, that he went to MIT. Right. He went to MIT and he studied all this stuff, a, a college degree. Everything that is out there right now says he never went to college. Which, okay, my rebuttal to that, number one, do you think the government has ever wiped someone from some history books? And whether it was college or university or maybe their military history or maybe a birth certificate or social well, security there, there's things around so say like they 
that oh, just because the records doesn't show that he did this, the guy built a jet engine car. Well, the, the, the government didn't <laughs> say, the government from has never said that he wasn't there. Is he was working What's on? The is he was on contract, working in basically a sub level, dare I say, peon position, and he he you know he, I'm not saying what he did or didn't see because it's never been really said, but they're saying yeah he was there and he was in in this area, but he was not working in the capacity in which he was. The, the other side of this is too the argument has to be made is with Art, as much and, traction as this guy has, in the publicity side and what he claims, I would assure you somebody would step up and validate. Nobody's validating his story. There has. There has been people that have stepped up. And like the security guard, for instance, who gave <clears throat> clearance to people whenever they got off the Janet flights to come to and from the facility, 30 years later, validated, yes, I did see Bob come on and off those flights uh, to the, the facility. So you do have other people that are corroborating Yeah, but those are, story. That, that's not corroborating a story. That's just corroborating that he was there. I mean... There's not denying what else that, they doing? and how how else there's nobody's this? denying that he was there. They're just what the issue was again, step by step, is they're saying I was a scientist, I was studying these type of isotopes, I was doing this. What they're saying is he didn't do that. He did he was doing this job, he was there. So yeah, the security guard, what I'm saying about that, yeah, sure the security guard would have seen him because he was there. So so what they're trying to say is that oh Bob isn't as smart as what he says he is. He never went to this school, and whenever he was here at this facility, he didn't do the job that he said he had. Well, is how that does what you're saying? how does MIT have records that all of a sudden everybody's is everybody's is there except for his? Well, I mean, unless you, you know, which is can okay, the government yeah. make this stuff happen? One hundred percent. Yeah, I would say that that's possible. Yeah, I mean, it's just a database. Uh, I mean, it's all it is. So same thing. Well, and back then you got to think that it wasn't a database <clears throat> in the cloud. This was just paper copies. You know, how hard would it be to get anybody to walk in there and pull his file and boom, it's gone forever. Right. Because you know, that, that's how they kept the records. But the, the thing that ultimately what I'm trying to get at is that the MIT was just a small part of it because that, that's just part of trying to discredit them. And then you have the, the other half of trying to say that he never worked at Los Alamos Labs. And despite the fact that you had a journalist who called him on multiple occasions over the course of several years, trying to get confirmation about it, they would always say, no, we have no records of him ever working here. Well, he pulls out a phone directory that has Bob's name listed under Los Alamos Labs in the directory to prove that he was there during that time period, as well as a photograph of him on the front page news saying Bob Lazar, physicist for Los Alamos Labs, yeah. doing X, Y, Z. So, you know, like, to, to try and, and say that he wasn't there is just crazy. And then on top of that, you're talking about a guy who's also in the news for building a jet engine vehicle. He was also in the news for running a prostitution ring too. Oh, so they so. say. So they say because, I mean, how how much more do you have to do if, if this guy is allegedly uh, running child prostitution? I, well, I'm just well, no, it wasn't child prostitution, just a prostitution ring brothel. But Either my way. thing is like, if they're gonna come up with something to. Put a guy in jail or destroy him, especially the, a prostitution ring. Maybe it to destroy something him, better. It's about discrediting because the thing <clears> of it is, <throat> the experts in this field and just the the normal crackhead believers who who think that aliens are, you know, descending upon us and abducting people all the time, uh, they're the people that do all the discrediting for the government. They have to do very little, and so all you have to do is just get him to be grouped up with everybody else, looking like you're crazy, and you've won. Right. Even if he's saying, even if everything he's saying is the truth, and I, I think that's what, <laughs> whatever that was, uh, I think that's exactly I'm what the situation is. I'm debunking you as we speak. So yeah, okay, <laughs> let, let, let's let's uh, let's hear. It. No, no, I, I mean I'm just I'm, I want to make sure that the, the things that are being thrown out there that I you know I'm not misquoting because I'm not. It's hard because the thing of it is this guy's back in what the 80s is that yeah. right? Yeah. So. You know, obviously, like I said a minute ago, so the prostitution ring com comes into play because that was obviously, you, you know, this is 2023. It's a different, whole different yeah. era of things, how that was handled. So, you know, I can't rule it out again that they would completely discredit it. I don't, I just can't buy this stuff because he has nothing more than his word. Well, he you was know, able I mean, to take the reporter through the Los Alamos facilities from the inside and correctly show them throughout the entire building like somebody who actually worked there. 
And then when you were talking about the Area 51 side, how you can how he can kind of prove himself that he actually was there working on these objects, is that he took three of his friends out three weeks in a row to view the craft whenever they were test flying them. And he has it on video. So it's not like, I mean, how else do you know that? Unless you're in the know. And you're not in the know if you're not doing anything yeah, to better the program. Yet again, if that, if that was so easily validated that way, I mean... It, it's to me it's too easy to discredit because the thing of it is the videos again are crap back in the 80s <laughs> I mean, what do you want? yeah it's but the thing of it is they, they, it is the 80s i'll give you that his friends that's like drinking yeah I mean, probably a one of the cameras you get a button yeah, that spits yeah, on yeah, it to cool get a picture ones. you know like i mean i get it i just yeah. if if they're gonna come up and they're gonna definitively say these things they're gonna have to have more evidence see the other thing it is too is like if this guy is kind of as, I'm going to say as shady as what he is. Yeah, I, I don't know him personally, so I can't really no. finally say he's that. Never prof like, he's never profited one dollar in all the years that he's come out and talked. He's never taken a single dollar for any of it. And he's been paid by a lot of people, but he donates it to charities and like scientists, organizations. So, because he knows it's dirty money. Right. So well, it, I mean, this I is mean, probably, I, I mean... Who else? And, and but there's going to have to be more, you know, whether it be the government coming out with it, which is probably very unlikely right now, they're going to have to be more substantial evidence to, than some guy saying. Because at the end of the day, even though that guy could be 100%, 100% right, at the end of the day, the only thing you and I know still at the end of the day is it's just a, another guy's word. You know, like I don't factually believe that to 100 degree 100 percent that i'm gonna have to actually put my eyes on it. i'm gonna have to put my hands on it but that's the downside of where we're at because we are so lied to by media by you know news by by the government that even if the government came out today and said hey you know we did find an alien for all i know it is just a publicity pull to get votes which you they, know, I mean, you, they have come out and said there are unidentified aerial phenomena that we do not know who that is and these people are and these objects and craft are flying over military I mean, installations uh close to military bases in restricted sure. airspaces and they always have some answer on? for it i mean like you know because one of them you know they were on the uss omaha there was one i mean i seen errors in that personally because one it's, it happened to be at night so fine it's a grainy blurry picture but this thing goes down and then back in the back down real quick and like oh splash splash like like it went in the water like it's like it can go from all these dimensions from space to air to, in the water, which Trans I'm not ruling it out that the thing's possible with the video. There's errors in it for one that I would personally see in it, and then it's not because yes it is grainy, it's a crappy video, all that stuff. I, I that's definite, but the way that it, it just demonstrates itself, there's errors in it, and it says glitch all over it. Um, and the thing of it is to even more validate that point, not saying that it's you know that these things didn't happen but to even more validate it even the government's coming out saying yeah these things do happen which on a whole other page that's alarming but so so you have that instance for one so how much of this stuff happens with other technology you know that's out there because it does happen um you know like the tic tac thing the problem with that one is that one could say it was glitched you know it was the guy is his radar is this but that's that's a problem yeah. there's other people that have seen it yeah um Six people saw it. both radars picked it up. Yeah, um, you know, the thing of it know. is that one particularly, if it were me from the government standpoint, I wouldn't have released some of that footage and probably wouldn't say anything because the problem of it is, is they had fighter jets that were trying to find this thing and they couldn't find it. Yeah. And that is our air defense, the best we have. Well, um, the way <laughs> I understand it is particularly, like basically the way that went down is it was supposed to be a test flight. They go out there. During the test flight, they say, hey, there's basically someone in this area. Go check it out. So they go to the area. They can see something's going on near the water. And that's at the point where they see the Tic Tac moving around at erratic rates of speed, doing things that are breaking the laws of physics. So as they get closer to it, the object notices him, mirrors what he's doing, and then goes to his cap point, which is basically a predetermined destination that they're going to be going to. Uh, so we got there before he did, and it was at least 60 seconds ahead of when the radar was able to refresh. So by the time the radar refreshed, he was already there, and it was over 50 mm -hmm. miles away. So yeah, traveling so at a crazy <clears throat> amount of speed. Uh, it was a very quick uh, situation as far as like from the start of the video to the end. 
and the full video was released. Um, <clears throat> but there's another video called The Gimbal, uh, which is a longer video where it actually shows a fleet of them, about four or five of them, but in the video that they released to the public, you're only seeing about a minute and a half, I believe, of when the object starts to turn on its side before going. Yeah, so so some of these things, you know, is like they defy all these laws of physics and, you know, aerodynamics and all that stuff, and I don't necessarily buy that because the only way they could possibly do it is something to defy gravity. Um, however, what you don't see, and you won't see this in any videos because all these videos are crappy to begin with. So, but we'll, we'll for say, for instance, they are true, what you can't see is all these different angles of this object. So you see a side view. Mm -hmm. How do you know that that doesn't have some type of propulsion system from the front and back? We don't because we can't see that. Cool. And so from the other side of other arguments from, an, from other encounters, you may see it from the back side. How do we know that these things are not, there's some propulsion from underneath or on top? Because this technology does exist. And so again, not ruling out that there's something out there, what I'm saying is, is people say, well, this thing's defying gravity. This thing's doing this. No, because the technology does exist. Well, for, for instance, you know, you, you talk about, well, maybe <clears throat> it, it, the propulsion coming from another angle that we can't see in the video. The problem with that is that uh, any kind of propulsion system you use is going to generate heat. And so, like, there's another video called the Go Fast video where he's tracking it going along the water. And the object is darker <clears throat> than the water, which would indicate that it's colder than the ocean water, which at that day they looked at, it was like right around 65 degrees. So something that's moving at a tremendous rate of speed using whatever propulsion system without generating much heat doesn't make much sense. I think it's possible. That we have uh, up to date. Yeah, I think it's possible. That, that because would, in itself would be a game changer. Well, I think it's possible though, because the thing of it is we do have a lot of water cooled stuff, you know, in technology to begin with. And I don't think it's very far conceivable to, to get something down to operate within a certain temperature. And I think, and the reason I say that too is because I think it's in our government's best interest to study that technology for the sheer fact that we know that thermals exist. And so that's, it is a game changer in a war. And the thing of it is, that is not so unthinkable, you know, more than say UFOs. That is such an easy concept to understand because all it is is just generating enough cold to offset the heat. But how do you do that? Yeah, well, I mean, crazy. well, the thing of it is, this technology existed in another form years ago in water-cooled machine guns. You know, and now I know that that's a, a very small scale, but they had these things for that reason. Is because they would get so stinking hot that they ran water through these things to keep them down. Would they pick up on, on thermal? Yeah, they would. You know, thermals I don't even think existed back then. Um, so the technology has been there for years, decades already. What we're talking it's about is flying different. at jet speeds. <clears throat> you know, there, there's just no way around it. You're flying at, at jet speeds. It's going to get hot. You know, and yeah, the, I, I think whatever. the atmospheric conditions, though, could play a factor in those things, too. Because, again, the problem with it is, is like some of these things with these Tic Tac thing, you know, the video stuff like that, they didn't have thermals, you know, on some of them. And yeah, so, well, they, can switch between so they can set... And that's, I guess, more what I'm trying to yeah. say. They're making ac or, or statements to something that they can't, they don't have any information on it at all. Well, they do. And that's the thing, though, because I, I think you're just trying to, to look at it from one angle and, and one angle alone. Like, for instance, the, the situation with the USS Omaha. Well, you can say, like, oh, that's a, a light reflection in the sky and this is, you know, something completely normal. Well, the problem of it is the entire ship was swarmed <clears throat> by these objects uh, that nobody was able to identify and the people on that ship it's their job to do that whether it's a drone or, or another craft you know the fact that they weren't able to do that they capture it on all these other different uh systems besides just visually and you're trying to say well no it, it's it's something else well you know, i never said it was a reflection because it's something else. what i was going to say that admitting, to that, like, hey there's something going on here yeah I, and i do believe that there's things out there and that's what they're concerned about is this you know china or russia spying us with technology that we may not necessarily have um but yeah it's a concern because i would i mean you look at any the chinese are advanced you know the bottom line and so and they have the money to back things too and so you look at these things and it's not such an inconceivable idea that what we'd say is UFOs. Like, no, you've got somebody out there in China, Russia, Germany, wherever, that's actually smarter than the American that created something. Well, I, I would say, look at what we did with the nuclear bomb. 
<clears throat> the moment we had the capabilities to use it and we dropped it on Japan, that wasn't just to drop it on Japan and, and end the, the war. It was to send a message to everybody else. Sure, I mean... And so <clears throat> if, if another country was up to this, doing something like this, it wouldn't just be mysterious, oh, you know, who was that? What was that? No, they're going to take ownership for it and to basically say, yeah, we own you. So I don't think at this point they would do that because the thing of it is, is if one of these foreign countries are doing that, you know, I, I don't know that it's an act of war, but it darn sure ain't going to be, it ain't gonna be yeah. looked at very nicely. You're traveling and restricted and so airspace, I don't think that, actively jamming radar systems. Yeah. I don't think that anything like that would come to tuition and brought to like, yeah, that was us until something like that gets, you know, captured or, or happens to actually fall in the ocean and they catch, you know, whatever, they get a hold of that, in, that technology. And that, and that kind of is the problem. Like, you know, with aliens, again, giving it the credit that's due, is it exist or not, you know, it's debatable. But the thing of it is, even if it's another life, or even they're intelligent, you know, like none of this is ever coming to facts. Like they, they have no visual, of, whether it's a little green man or a very sophisticated version of a human or something completely different, there's nothing out there that they've got this that, that to the public's information. Now, if the government, okay, it is what it is. But well, there's nothing the out there that shows that. Then you have a guy that's telling you they got it. Yeah, but yeah, our government is so corrupt and so easily bought out and so many leaks that people, the more people know about things, and this is just a general rule of thumb with people in general, they run their mouth. And there's somebody out there right now that could have this information, this very profitable information, if they could just even factually somewhat prove it. And the thing of it is, a cell phone would somewhat prove it because they can say, no, that's, that's generated, that's a fake, that's a whatever. They can take that and see. Um, now, there's some liability there of how yeah. much trouble they would get yeah. in and stuff like that, that, obviously. You know, um, the thing of it is, you know, even the Area 51 thing, our, I say our government, I would think is smart enough that if, in fact, they were holding this stuff there of some sort, whatever it may be, it's surely not there now. I don't know. I, you know, because I, I did think about that exact question, too. And if I was the government... The best thing about Area 51 now is that you don't have to be so secretive. Do you have to maybe change the times that you're doing it? Sure. But overall, you really don't have to change because everyone's assuming you're going to do that. So <clears throat> why would you not just stay put? Let's well, and there's some down. things too, unless you're yeah. not trying to hide anything, unless you're just, because the thing of it is with Area 51, and there's other places, other stuff too, they have you know, stuff that's testing, you know, new technology, stuff like that. The bottom line is they say they build some new fancy jet. They got to test it. They got to put it in the air somewhere, you know? So, so somebody's out there with their camera or cell phone. What is that? It's a UFO. No, it's not. It's the government's testing yeah. something. Which the and military they, can prove and disprove a lot of the incidents that go on from the public side. But the problem of it is what they're running into and why they've had to create these task force to study these events is because there is something going on there are a lot of people service members who are encountering these things and there's no protocol so and it is a, a flight risk yeah this, this is the group in my opinion as much as you would advocate that and i would probably go into probably you'd probably agree that after i make the statement i don't think it was designed for that i think it's an internally designed cover-up it's like okay they want the press to find out what's going on. Here's what the press is going to get. They're going to give them the information that the government wants them to know. That's what that group is designed for, if they were designed for anything at all. It wasn't to say, okay, let's let's look into this and see. Now, that's what they got the stupid Space Force for. Well, they, you know, whatever. Isn't that what they're for? I mean, they're the, supposed to be looking at this the, stuff. The head of Project Blue Book, which I, I believe was the last like true UFO study that the government did, he did come out and openly admit that, hey, basically the point of this program was to kind of demystify UFO phenomena and where people weren't so wrapped up in it, basically to try and, and push some of the attention away by debunking uh, a lot of it. And so it kind of was a, a little bit of a psyop. So I could definitely see them doing the same thing again, but I think it, it's kind of changed now because we are in this kind of newer age where we're starting to understand things better but you also have a lot more people that are seeing these things where you can't just keep it under wraps like you used to because someone can, like there are pilots out there who will whip out their own cell phone, which they can then release to the public because it's their footage. Sure. But, you know, good luck catching a, an object when you're traveling 
how yeah, they're fast, you know, going with <laughs> faster than the speed of sound and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, and I would have to discredit that, you know, video right off the bat because it would be horrible. Uh, you know? <clears throat> but the point of it all is, though, to me, someone like Bob Lazar, uh, who didn't take any financial interest in the situation, you know, didn't profit off of information that he gave, uh, as far as what the story that he gives, it's factually consistent. He reported things way back in the day that nobody else could have known, and he just so happens to guess right in all these situations. Well, it was, whether it's Element One Hundred and Fifteen, uh, the the way that he was able to give it, the way he was given access, badge keys, and stuff like that, the scanning uh, mechanism that they used, or security measurement, whatever you want to call it, uh, the location of where they were flying the craft, the times of when they were flying the craft. Uh, you know, all these weird little things that unless you were part of that unit or team that's working on these things, you just don't have that information. I, I and, and that's and that's and, arguable because from my side being in the military, you don't have to actually be part directly to know when these things take place. Well, and so you? like the flight times and stuff like that. If he was on that base, even on a capacity of a um, even a civilian, is he was a civilian contractor? Um, he would be exposed to it enough to know general flight times. In a, in a sense, though, because the way he explained it <clears> was that it was very compartmentalized and basically saying that like he was uh, in charge of the reactor, I believe, and trying to figure out how it works uh, and everything else and trying to back engineer it. <clears throat> so they only gave him documents relating to the reactor. Uh, <clears throat> other parts of the craft, whether it was like maybe what material was this made out of, mm -hmm. well, that's another division and they don't talk amongst each other because you're, it's yeah, I top mean, secret. <coughs> there's, so, there's a lot of things that I think is very arguable in there that, you know, for one, if I graduated from MIT, I can guarantee you I would have a freaking paper up on my wall at a minimum I would have kept my diploma, my degree. Where's this? Uh, I mean, I, I and disagree. And it got lost in the fire. I'm, yeah, I, I disagree. I don't, I mean, I don't think that, because you got to understand, there are a lot of people out there who are extremely intelligent, but kind of quirky or don't want attention and especially if you've done something like yeah but all he's got to do is just say oh what about this piece of paper that simple oh, okay well what about them saying hey you don't work at los alamos labs and then he brings the proof and people still want to try and say oh he didn't work there well you know, it's the same thing it's like how many times do you have to prove yourself the thing of it is with that documentation is different than a degree because that is that is that's a that's a sealed you know, um, I say sealed the word I'm looking for, notarized document. Well, like you're gonna have, now you're gonna have to debunk that. You're gonna have to debunk a notary. You're gonna have yeah. to, it, you know, and these things are. They could go back and say, oh, Joe doc or notarized that on you know April first, for instance. Yeah. They go back and say, okay, yeah, he was a notary there. He was this. He was that. Mm -hmm. You know, the the thing of it is, that's a very big piece of documentation that somebody from a, a, a big credited school like that. They would. I think that they would have. Again, well, not saying about that a guy that he could build a laser gun, and create a jet engine car. You know, so clearly this man has capabilities and and is extremely intelligent. And so we'll just say he didn't even go to MIT. But you, as the government, you know, and you've been working on these projects for however long, you know, you see a guy like that that clearly you can discredit them. Well, hey, you know, he doesn't have the educational background maybe that most people do. Uh, you know, he loves guns, has a, a pirate flag hanging outside of his house. You know, he builds jet engine vehicles, you know, all these weird little things about the guy. You can use all that as ammunition to discredit them if something goes wrong or just after the program's over. So it, it would kind of make sense to pick someone like Bob Lazar, but I don't think what they were accounting for is that people want the truth. And, and the thing of it is, whenever you are backtracking, there, there's always a level of faith you have to have. You know, whether it's someone like Commander David Fravor, you know, we obviously we have video evidence and everything else to support what he was saying, just like Bob yeah. does. Well, see, uh, the, the other part of this that's really, you know, questionable too, I guess, from the government side, that if in fact the heat, this was all real and at the time he's coming out, it would have been a threat to national security, bottom line. And there is not an amount of time that lapses. Obviously, on that job, he was held to some type of security clearance. 
w if he yeah. was in fact he in that job, that. Yeah. he would have been held to some sort of security clearance. And you know, so one, where did that get bre breached at? Where the government could come in and do something. A threat to national security, it doesn't matter if it's freaking five years, 30 years. If you're a threat to national security, you automatically, you've already got enough to put you to, I'd say I'd be arrested, but to do something. And they did neither of these things. And the reason being is because I don't think he was there. I don't think he did any of these things. And that's why the government had no envelope to push because it was all a lie. Well, I, if that if that's the case, then well, the only thing I would say for anybody that that's watching or listening would have to be, go watch the documentary. You know, go watch the the episode that he does with Joe Rogan, where he talks for over two and a half hours, and tell me that his story isn't convincing by the time you're you're done hearing it, because it, you know, I, we, I feel like we can go back and forth on you know these little tidbits of of information, like did he go to MIT? Uh, or did he also produce a, a jet engine vehicle on his own in his garage? You know, so like, I guess for me at least, I would kind of, especially in today's world, I would take the guy who can build a jet engine on his own over an MIT grad. Uh, especially if we're talking about trying to figure out something that nobody knows how to figure out. You'd want probably a fresh set of eyes on there than what you've been getting. <clears throat> Beyond that, you know, you're also talking about a situation ultimately dad where no matter what there's always going to be skeptics and the the problem with being a skeptic in this situation is that it's it's lazy you know to say that there because we don't have direct physical evidence that I can hold in my hand right now it must not be true well that's just it's lazy you know at the end of the day because that, that requires no uh, real thought or explanation behind it other than prove it well, the problem of it is, how do you explain something that is not of this world? We don't have a, a dictionary to how to describe these crafts because, number one, no one ever wants to have the conversation. So beyond that, whenever people do actually have these experiences or see these types of things, how do you explain that in a, in a so way I mean, that can be consistent so I mean, the person over time, that... which they are. There's documented history over the course of 50, 60 years now where different types of craft have been seen. And then here we are, 50, right. 60 years later, and the same thing still Well, I mean, on. the argument can be so made it's lazy because you're like, well, I have to have the facts to see it, whatever that. I would also, you know, and, and you know, each man their own, I would say it's ignorance just because you've seen it on the internet or because you've seen it on TV that you believe it. Because the fact of it is, the people that seeing this, you included, you don't have anything more to go off of than those documentaries, than that person's word. You know, there, there's the pieces and stuff yeah. like that. More so there's ignorance on that part too. So just as it's lazy, just as ignorance, you know, whatever else. I think the bottom line of it is in these in these situations with all of them is I don't think we can rule this out. Is there little green men? I would argue that 100% that is dumb. My opinion doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I think it's dumb. Is there other life besides humans? I think it's a possibility. You know, and the reason I say that's a possibility is because... I'm not going to run from a Christian belief that if God created the heavens and the earth, going off that premise, you know, just because he didn't put in the Bible that I didn't create something else, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, because we Which look at things, you yeah. know, God didn't say, I made the cheetahs, I made the leopards, I made, you know, he made the animals. He didn't give every little specific one. And, and we, we obviously have a bunch of them. So we can't yeah. say, well, God didn't make that because that wasn't in the Bible. No, that, that's ignorance. The other thing that I look at in kind of a big picture to kind of look at do these things exist is we look at life right now on earth maybe not people but in in creatures and you know animals all this other stuff and we're finding new things all the time you know and and so there's this i you know you could say new life out there these things have been around and they're just discovering them and so is it possible that this is out there and we just haven't discovered it yet sure because that is happening as we speak uh, well, I mean, I, I guess for me, the, the conclusion ultimately would be, as an individual, it's your responsibility to do some of your own research and look at it with a skeptical eye. But don't be so skeptical that you rule out all possibilities, you know, because at the end of the day, there's a lot more questions anytime, you know, I watch these videos or these documentaries or anything or listen to people talk about it then I, I feel like I, I get answers. In a lot of ways, I feel like that's a good thing 
because in a situation where we're dealing with the unknown, I think it requires us to be open-minded as to what it is. You know, I would be interested before we get out of here, if aliens existed, do you think they're from another planet, another dimension? You know, what, what do you think their origins no, actually if, are? If, if I had to say that they, they existed, I think American public would probably be very uh, not want to claim it. They're probably some species of something that is absolutely... I got, I got to be careful with my words. I'm dumb, <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, they've got all this new technology. they got all this cool stuff. And, you know, it's like, no, they don't. That's just something that, you know. I think the government has this stuff. I mean, I could go on and on about this because it's such a back and forth type thing. But I think we'd probably be let down to what, after all these years and all the money and all this investment, I think we'll probably be let down. And the thing of it is, at the end of the day, skeptic or not, I could care less. I mean, right now, at this state where everything's at, there is nothing infringing at all in my life to national security, to my livelihood on a day-to-day -day basis, or my family. Yeah. And, and I highly doubt that there's going to be a, um, as, as little as we know about any alien species, supposedly, I highly doubt that we're going to have this big alien takeover anytime soon. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about it. <laughs> well, okay. So from, from my perspective, like if I was actually going to have to throw some money down and make a guess, uh, I would say it's got to be interdimensional. You know, because I, I think if we, if the craft and the videos that we're seeing are real, are legit from another world, uh, and they can travel at this rate of speed and break the every law of physics that we know currently, it's to me, it, it would make sense then that someone would be capable of basically, time and space no longer matters at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, you can travel any distance, however fast <clears throat> you need to. So, you know, combining that, it's just to me, it would make more sense. And especially with how big the galaxies and, and the universe is, it would just make sense to interdimensional more than like interplanetary, like as far as from yeah. Mars or whatever. Well, that's a problem, you know, that, uh, you know, not to keep going down these roads, but there's so much even places, you know, no, not a lot, but there's places that's undiscovered. I think I'm talking about the rain. Or the ocean. Like, there's yeah. all these places that are undiscovered or un, you know, yeah. populated, whatever. So I don't know. Maybe there's some group of, uh, you know, very intelligent people out here that they're, they'll probably pass it off as they were, you know, I'm not going to go down that road. Well, that it, opens it up a whole other debate. But if if they were like underwater. Yeah, you know, like have some type of crazy base down there somewhere deep in the Well, you never know. You might have like Gilman or something yeah. down there that can <laughs> breathe water um, and, you know, I don't know. But to me, I guess the last point I would make, you know, because I feel like this is the other argument out here too. If aliens existed, they wouldn't come to Earth because Earth isn't really worth their time. Uh, and I, I just completely disagree with that because I think at the end of the day, people are special and unique. <clears throat> and you're talking about... Um, Let's see, what, what's the people that are basically primates with medieval institutions and godlike technology combining all those things together? What a great movie to watch! And so, if I'm an alien from outer space and it takes nothing for me to swing by Earth real quick and watch these guys duke it out over land and they're you know destroying the Earth and everything else. It, at the very least, it would be interesting to watch. Like, if, we, if we're willing to watch birds and, you know, worms or whatever else, you know, all these weird little creatures, just us doing that, why would an alien not do that with a, another species they may, that's they may look developing at like, Oh, look at those little birds down there. You know, I don't know. I don't know what they think. If that's the case, you know. Um, I just think that there would be, I don't know. We could go, again, we could go on and on. So the only thing I'm going to do is, you know, get some feedback from people, see what they think. I don't know. Yeah, and make sure, guys, that you're liking and, and subscribing to our podcast. You know, we'd love any support for helping out a, a local creator. Uh, you know, until I'm, I'm making money, I got to plug myself. So, you know, with that, we really do appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, this was enlightening. I, I love talking about uh, topics like this. So, you know, drop a comment below. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you next week.